Which image looks better? What about now? Have you ever wondered why your outdoor shots look a little bit flat in terms of colour and exposure, but you know that you exposed it perfectly? Like, what's going on there? Well, there was only one thing that I changed in each of those examples, but the difference is huge. And the thing is, if you don't do it, your shots are going to look a little bit dull and they're going to lack that professionalism that you've really been after. But before I tell you what it is, it might seem a little bit simple and it's not the sexiest thing to make a video about, but make sure you watch the whole video because there might be some things that you don't know and definitely some others that you need to be aware of. So if you look at this shot you'll see that the background is fairly well exposed but then this side of my face is a little bit underexposed and then this side is very overexposed and a little bit shiny. One thing you could do is use some diffusion and mask some of that off and then you can set the exposure for my face now. But the thing is it's a little bit of a pain in the bottom when you're working alone and you haven't got a crew to help you carry all this stuff and set it up properly. A more practical thing you could do is use one of these. This is a circular polarizer filter which basically reduces glare from reflective surfaces. So watch what happens when I add the CPL filter and then rotate it. So look at this shine just disappear and now I can set my exposure properly because I'm not having to compensate for that shininess on my face. How cool is that? I'm going to show you five situations where one of these is going to come in really handy and why you're going to want to keep one in your camera bag at all times as well as some things to be careful about when using one because believe it or not you can get it wrong. Moment kindly sent me this one which will cost around $60. I'm going to leave some links in the description if you want a more affordable version. But when it comes to filters, it's definitely worth spending that little bit extra because you're going to get better quality threads and also less of a colour shift which I'll talk about in a bit. If you're filming anything to do with water or ducks in a pond, boom, CPL filter. Get it on. So it cuts through all of those reflections so you can see into the water. And the colours are so much better as well. Rather than having the blue reflections from the sky, it looks how it should. You know, brown and dirty. What if you want to film through a car window so that you can see the person inside? CPL filter. If you're filming outside and it's really bright, you can actually lose the colour of the sky. All that blue is gone and it just looks white and completely washed out. But a CPL filter is going to bring back the colour of that sky. There are also a few less obvious times where it's great to use a CPL filter, like with leaves and grass. And this makes a huge difference to landscape shots with lots of greens because it's going to take it from looking white and dull and no colour to being really vibrant and having better contrast. Okay, let me just show you this quickly before I show you the downsides of a CPL filter. I never knew how much I needed a filter case until I used this one from Moment. And what it means is no longer do I have to keep all my filters separately and in these hard cases taking up loads of room in my bag. I can just pop them all into this filter case along with the nice little cloth I've got in there. They're all in the separate pouches and it keeps them nice and safe and that just goes inside of my bag in a separate little compartment. So every time I know I'm going to be filming outdoors, they go with me. You can, depending on the situation, get a slight colour shift, which means if you've set your white balance first and then you put the CPL filter on, it could look a little bit green or pink, especially if you're using a variable ND filter first because we've got all sorts of polarisation and stuff going on. I don't know, but... My advice there is to set the white balance after you've put your filters on and that's a kind of general rule anyway. If you have any questions about white balance, there'll be a link to a video here or in the description. I highly recommend checking that one out after watching this video. Most filters have another thread on the outside of the filter so you can stack different filters on top of each other. But variable ND filters don't do that and I don't know if it's because they don't want you to put a CPL filter on after, I'm not sure. but it works in a slightly different way. You don't always get the results you want by having the CPL filter and a VND filter at the same time. And they work differently depending on if you put them on before or after. If your camera is facing the sun, the CPL filter isn't going to work anywhere near as well as if you're at 90 degrees or 180 degrees, so just bear that in mind. If you're using wide angle lenses, you might get some blotching and patches of the effect working but not over the entire thing. Anything from 28 or 35 upwards, you're gonna get better, more consistent results. Right, just because you can, doesn't mean you should 
use it all the way. Sometimes if you get the sky looking too dark, it looks a little bit unnatural. It's great if you're doing black and white photography, for example, and you want the sky to be really dark. That's cool, you can get some good effects, but it can look a bit unnatural. So just be mindful of how far you're going. Sometimes you might want the reflections. For example, in this shot here, the light reflecting on this post shows how much of a bright day it was. And that's quite nice. It sets the scene well. If you get rid of all the reflections, it can look a little bit unnatural. So again, don't go all the way if you don't need to. You can just get rid of the reflections a little bit and then it's gonna give you a good blend of being natural and also not too much glare. It's not the type of filter where you can just set and forget because if you're gonna be moving around at different angles, that it's gonna change. The, the reflections and everything's gonna change. A CPL filter actually cuts light, so if you're using it in dark situations and you need extra light, it's probably not a great idea to use it. Having said that, if you're in dark situations, you're probably not gonna use it anyway because there's not gonna be many reflections. But if you are using one outside, just be mindful that you're gonna have to set your exposure after you've dialed in your CPL filter. And then there's a style preference. Initially, I thought I wanted the sky to be a little bit darker, so I put the CPL filter on but then looking back after I color graded it I actually like that the sky is a little bit brighter in the original version without the CPL filter because it looks a little bit more vintage again it's a style preference so my advice is to definitely have a CPL filter take it with you and then you can try options with and without and it's always better to have one and not need it than it is to need it and not have one Using a polarizer filter will make sure that your colors look more vibrant in challenging situations, but they're not as powerful when using them on their own without following the advice in this next video, because there's actually one more thing that you need to do that will take your videos from looking okay to being up there with the pros. And that's precisely why you should watch this video next, because it's gonna teach you exactly what you need to do.